Hey guys, Brad from SimpleGuitar.com here and thanks for watching another video today. We're gonna to be talking about strum patterns. Now, do you ever feel like you're just playing the same strum pattern over and over and over? And that really starts to sound kind of boring to you, right? So something that I hear students say all the time is, I need new strum patterns. And what it really boils down to is you don't just need new strum patterns, you need a new way of playing the strum patterns that you already know. See, this is a really common feeling for a lot of guitar players is they feel like I'm playing the same thing over and over. When it boils down to it, there's only so many rhythmic combinations available to us. There's only so many different rhythms that we can do. And so what we need to do is we need to get creative in different ways, and that will help us to create strum patterns that sound different from another, even if you're playing the exact same rhythm. So today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a couple of things that you can do that'll take any strum pattern that you know, and it'll make it sound different and more exciting. Now, big idea number one that I want to get through to you is that you don't wanna be too rigid with strum patterns. You have to remember the purpose of strum patterns is to train your ability to feel and keep time. It's to train your ability to feel the beat, to keep that beat going, and to maintain the rhythm and the beat of the song. That's the whole purpose. The purpose is not, this is the strum pattern, this is the name of the strum pattern, and I have to play it exactly this way every single time. That's not the purpose of strum patterns. Strum patterns are to build your feeling for time and your ability to keep time with whatever music you're playing. So don't view them dogmatically. Don't be like, I have to play this strum pattern and I have to play it this way every time. Don't do that. That'll actually hold you back from being more creative and sounding cooler. It's okay if you don't play your strum patterns the exact same way every single measure, okay? You have my permission to mess them up. Now here's one of my favorite things to show students because funny thing, I actually started out playing drums before I ever picked up guitar. And when you're in concert band in school playing and you're playing on a snare drum, there's not a whole lot that you can do to make things sound different and to sound interesting. But one of the most common things that drummers will use that make things sound better is they will use accents. And what I mean by accents is not an American accent or a British accent, right? What I mean is accenting different notes that you're playing. And so to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to play certain notes louder and we're going to play certain notes softer. And by doing that, we can take one strum pattern and we can change it up and make it feel totally different just by accenting different notes within the strum pattern. Now, this is something that I don't see a lot of people talk about, but it seriously is one of the most useful things for rhythm guitar that will make your rhythm guitar playing sound better and it'll make it sound more interesting and it can make you sound different even if you're playing the same rhythm over and over and over. So check this out. I'm going to put up on the screen a very simple strum pattern. This is just eighth notes. So we're, we have a measure with four beats and we're gonna play eight notes in that measure, and we would count this one and two and three and four and for each note. And the strumming that we're gonna do for this is down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. So we're gonna strum down on the beat. So on one, two, three, four, we're gonna strum down. And then in between the beats on the off beat, we're gonna strum up. And remember when you strum up with chords like this, we're gonna play full chords you're only going to strum two or three strings. Don't strum the whole chord or else you sound like a goober, okay? That'll sound a lot better. So if we take this really simple strum pattern of down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, this is how most people would play this and they would play it the same way every single time like this. Right after a while, it gets kind of boring. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a couple of these different notes within that strum pattern. We're not, I'm not gonna change any strumming. I'm still just gonna strum down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, one and two and three and four and, but I'm gonna accent different notes and that's gonna totally change the feel of it, okay? 
So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put an accent on beat two and on beat four. Why am I doing this? Because in most modern music, those are the beats that the drums are going to accent. You're going to hear the snare drum hit on beat two and beat four. So this is a really common thing to do. So I'm going to play beat two louder and I'm going to play beat four louder than all the other notes. Okay. And you're going to see this will take that same strum pattern and make it feel totally different. So this is how accenting beat two and beat four will sound. Right, so I didn't change anything that I played there. I'm still playing down, up, down, up, down, up. But I started to hit harder when I played beat two. So I'd go one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Right? So let's show you how this will totally change again. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to accent beat number three. And with beat number three being accented instead of beat two or beat four, even though I'm playing the exact same rhythm, I'm playing one and two and three and four and, it's all the same, but it's gonna feel totally different. So this is how that will sound, accenting beat three. Now this is going back. Let's go back to accenting beat two and beat four so that you can see how different it is. Right? Now here's accenting beat three again. Right, so I'm playing the exact same strum pattern. My rhythm is the same. I'm playing one and two and three and four and, and that's it. But by changing what notes I'm accenting, it feels like a totally new, totally different strum pattern. And this is what most people need to do to make their strum patterns more interesting and to feel like you're not just playing the same thing over and over. Now let's do another one. This one's fun. Uh, this one, I'm actually gonna accent beat number two, and then I'm gonna accent the and of four. So it's the last note in the measure. So I'm gonna go one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and, okay? So that's how that's gonna sound. It's gonna feel totally different and that that will sound like this. different feel. I actually stole that. That is a really cool rhythm from the song Burning Man by Third Eye Blind. Cool song. Go check it out if you haven't heard it before. Anyway, so the idea is, is what I'm doing here is I have eight notes that I'm using for my strum pattern, and I'm just choosing to accent or play louder certain notes over other notes, okay? And that is what changes the feel. It's totally arbitrary which ones I'm choosing to do. Now it's really common to see stuff like beats two and beat four accented or beat three accented, okay? It's really common to see stuff like that, but just doing that, paying attention to the feel of the song and where different accents can happen with your strumming is gonna totally change it up even if you don't change the rhythm 
of your strum pattern. Let, now let's do one more really quick. This is a really, really common one, more uh, with power chords and stuff like that and palm muting stuff, but I'm just gonna do it with an open chord here and show you how to do it here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna accent beat number one, and then I'm gonna accent the end of beat two, and then I'm gonna accent beat four. So the way that most people will think of this is I've got a group of three notes at the beginning. We're gonna have one and two, and I'm gonna accent beat one. So that's a group of three notes. And then I'm gonna accent the and of two and have a group of three notes. So I'll have and three and, and I'm accenting the first one. And then I'll have a group of two notes at the end and I'm accenting beat four, which is the first one. So it'll be three notes, three notes, two notes in the measure. So I'm accenting the first one, I'm accenting the fourth one, and then I'm accenting the seventh note. It's a little bit different, but that will sound like this. Right, totally different feel, even though I'm still playing down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. I'm not changing my strum pattern. I'm just changing what notes are accent. One other thing about this is accenting notes means that you're playing certain notes louder than the other notes. At the same time, that means that those other notes that you're not accenting need to be played quieter. And there's a little hack that most beginner guitar players aren't aware of that will help you do just that. And here it is. Play fewer strings of your chord. You don't have to play all six strings of a six string chord or all five strings of a five string chord or even all four strings of a four string chord. You can play parts of chords. You don't have to strum the entire chord every single time. And if you do that, that is going to give you a way to make your chords and your strumming sound different without changing anything. And it also makes it easier to have quieter notes so that your accents stand out further. Okay, so before what I've been doing is I've been pretty much playing the chord, the full chord and everything. But when you listen to really good rhythm guitar players, they're not always playing every single string of every single chord. You're gonna hear a lot of partial chords getting played. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna accent beat two and beat four, but when I'm not accenting, I'm not gonna play the full chord. I'm only gonna play a few of the strings and that's gonna help my accent sound out a lot better. So that's how this sounds. Here's how it goes if I'm playing partial chords, if I'm not strumming every string of the chord and I accent beat three, that's how this will sound. Right, so this, is a really cool trick that one, it makes you sound way more advanced than you are. And so you can practice adding in accents on different notes and you can draw this out, man. You can totally just write down eight notes. Okay, write down eight notes like I've had up on the screen and you choose which ones you're gonna accent. Now to accent it, you're gonna put a little almost Pac-Man looking thing. This is called an accent symbol. You just put that over which ones you want to play louder. And you can try out different combinations with accenting different notes within that measure. It doesn't matter which one you do. The one thing that I will say though, is you don't want to accent too many because if you accent everything, then nothing is accented. So you want your accents to stand out by having a few notes that are louder, a couple notes that are louder, not all the notes, okay? But experiment with doing different ones to give you different rhythmic feels and ideas. And if you're doing this, this is really gonna help also to develop that feel for the beat and for the rhythm so that you're in sync with any of the music that you're playing.
So what I want you to do is just that. I want you to go map out eight notes in a measure, and then I want you to try out different strum patterns using accents on different notes. And remember, on the notes that you're not accenting to play those quieter, the easiest way to do that is to play fewer strings. But I hope that this is awesome for you. I hope that it helps you out. So go have some fun. Try changing up the strum patterns that you already know with some accents, and it's gonna open up a lot of creative possibilities for you. It's gonna make things sound way more different, way more interesting, and so go have fun with it. Now, on top of that, I do have a free gift for you at my website. If you go to simpleguitar.com slash top 10, there I have a 17-page guide for you called the top 10 things to learn on guitar first. Now, if you've been playing guitar for a little bit, these are 10 things that are really going to help boost your progress a lot faster because you get a lot more bang for your buck out of these things. But if you're just starting out, these are the things that I like to teach beginners right away because it gets you up and playing and being musical faster. So go check out that guide, start using that stuff, have fun with it. Have fun making up strum patterns with these accents. You don't have to change your rhythm. You just have to change how you're playing your strum patterns to sound cooler. And thanks for watching the video. If this was helpful for you, leave a comment down below. Thanks for liking and subscribing as well. And I will catch you guys in the next video.